All right, 5.3, a little farther now. Here's triangle ABC. M is two thirds of the way from A to B. N is two thirds of the way from A to C. What can you say about segment MN compared to segment BC? Provide a reason for each of your conjectures. All right, so if M is two thirds of the way from A to B, what I can do is I can call this entire side AB, I'm gonna call that 3x. And if M is two thirds of the way, well, two thirds of 3x is 2x. So that must mean my remaining side right here has gotta be x, because 2x plus x equals 3x, and the whole must be the sum of my parts, right? Um, I can do the same thing for AC. Let's call this entire side AC 3y. All right, if an is 2 thirds of the way, I'm gonna call that 2y. And then lastly, I'm gonna call nc just y. All right, so using the same method we used before, I know that this angle A is congruent to itself by the reflective property. So I've got two triangles here that are similar. Why are they similar? Well, that would be side, angle, side, similarity. Side, 3y and 2y are in proportion of two over three. Angle, this angle A is congruent to itself in both triangles. The second side, 3x over 2x, I mean, uh, 2x over 3x, will give me that same scale factor of 2 thirds. So I've got two sides that are proportional, and then one angle in the middle that's congruent. So the two triangles are, are similar by SAS. So what can I say about segment MN compared to segment BC? All right, well, one thing we can do is the same thing we did in the last problem. If I wanna call this, let's call this 2z, since I've got 2x, 2y here, let's call this one 2z. Well, using that same sort of reasoning, if this is 2x, this is 3x, this is 2y, this is 3y, if this is 2z, then this side BC is going to be 3z. So, what can we say about segment MN compared to segment BC? Well, if I take BC and I multiply it by 2 thirds, I'm going to get MN. Why is that? Corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. All right. There's even more that we can say about BC and MN. Just looking at these two lines, they appear to be parallel. Well, if I know that these two triangles are similar, besides knowing that all the sides are proportional, I also know that my corresponding angles are congruent. So I know that M here is going to be congruent to this angle down here, ABC. And I also know that this angle here is going to be corresponding to this angle C. So if we have angles like this, these are known as corresponding angles, right? If you remember from our unit on parallel lines, let me take a pen and sort of extend these lines so it's easier to see. And if these are parallel lines here, Right. We could call this the transversal right here. So I see that these are pretty much like, if I were to tilt it a little bit, this angle is in the top left, and this angle is also in the top left in relation to that vertex. So we call these corresponding angles. And when corresponding angles are congruent, the lines that form them must be parallel. That's the corresponding angle theorem converse. All right, so we can say that BC, or line segment BC is parallel to line segment MN by the corresponding angle theorem converse. All right, and that really is all we can say about those two sides, that they are have a scale factor, making them proportional, and then they also have to be parallel because these angles are congruent and corresponding. All right, are you ready for more? 
dilate triangle DEF using scale factor of negative one and center at F. Well, I know that if I were to normally dilate this, I would start at F and extend through E and then extend through D as well. But if we're doing a negative scale factor, we're going in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go through F in the opposite direction and same thing with point D. All right. Now to dilate it, I'm gonna set my compass equal to FD and then I'm gonna swing it around to the other side and mark off that same distance. Oh, this is, let me tighten my compass a little bit. Let me make sure I got that right. All right, making sure I got the same distance here and I was a little bit off, so I'll use that, that inner one instead of that outer one. All right, and that'll be D prime. I'm gonna do the same thing with FE. Actually, this looks like it's an isosceles triangle, so I don't even have to change the length of my compass. These two sides are congruent. And that'll be E prime. All right, I'm gonna make my marks here to really show those vertices and I'm gonna connect them. All right. So because we've been dilated, I already know that these two triangles are gonna be similar. So how does DF compare to um, D prime, F prime? All right, well, I know they're congruent because since the scale factor is negative one, I haven't changed the length of uh, my side. So I know that DF is going to be equal to D prime, F prime. Because really negative one, we're not, you can't have like a negative length, like that's not possible, right? You can't say, oh, I'm negative three inches tall. It's just the direction that it's facing is away from the center of dilation. Normally when we dilate, we go out, we extend through the point. Since it's negative dilation, we're going in the reverse direction. But the lengths of these two are exactly the same because I use my compass and really it's like I created a circle and like a diameter. Let me just show that real quick. Oh, sorry, my document camera is so low. It's, yeah, it's very difficult to, to draw this. It's really a diameter of that circle. And these are two radii, DF and FD are radii. So all radii of circle are congruent. So I know that those two line segments are congruent. Um, yeah, so that's I guess what they're trying to say here. Are E, F, and E prime collinear? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, yeah, they are collinear because they are all on the same line of projection. So they are collinear.